Welcome participants as you join us here. Let's give everybody a couple minutes here to get settled. All right, so um, let's, uh, let's kick off here. Um, so this is a kind of a joint webinar between uh, Call Source, my buddy Jack Price, you're up above me, I don't know where where I am in the I'm you. Jack Price. Uh, my name is Brian Kaskavalsian from G4 Marketing Group. I know both your clients are on this and my clients are on this. And so what we're going to do here, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit different, is we are going to talk about the essentially the customer journey and um, how we create great experiences in today's marketplace. And um, uh, Jack is going to start with kind of the before part before they actually become a customer and I'm going to talk about what happens after they become a customer and um, the idea here is to help everybody um, get a competitive advantage um, aside from the fact of making more money which is of course always should be number one on everybody's mind um, some of the things that Jack is going to talk about and some of the things that I'm going to talk about will give you a competitive advantage in the marketplace. And um, in today's world, competitive advantage is everything. And um, so I think, is that about right, Jack? You want to add anything to that? That's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. And that's some of what we'll be talking about today is really that competitive ad, uh, advantage, that edge, that, that thing that differentiates you from your uh, competitors, right? Um, that customer journey, where are they find you? How are they finding you? Um, what's, what's the best source to find you and things of that nature? So what I'll do is I think what I'll do is I'll start in just for those who don't know who Call Source is, right? Call Source has been established just over 30 years. I've been with CallSource for just about 15, maybe just over 15 years um, working in this space, um, home improvement, call center space, the automotive, healthcare, all in of which have very common phone calls, which means the, the goal of these phone calls is really to uh, book, an, book an appointment for an in-home consultation or an in-office consultation to uh, set up a sales professional or sales represent, representative to demonstrate the product, the value behind the product. So I'll start off with our integrated partners. And the reason why I'm doing this is because in the past, uh, before about two years ago, in order to even work with call source, um, one thing was that you have to have your calls recorded, whether it be through our tracking telephone numbers for marketing attribution. Um, we have now evolved quite a bit to where a lot of our integrated uh, phone solutions that we have um, do record the phone call. So I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with 8x8, VoIP Tools, 5.9. Uh, Lead Perfection is a uh, CRM that we're integrated with and Market Stripe is also a, um, a CRM that we're also integrated with, right? So the goal behind this and but behind what I'm talking about is the importance of not only recording your phone calls, but what you should do with the findings. So let's start off here with understanding your, your, your customer journey. First things first, right? Lots of sweat equity goes into uh, creating uh, awareness, right? Whether it be through so social media, uh, some of the traditional uh, organic searches, PPC campaigns, different directories that you guys are doing, blogs, some of you guys are really sophisticated in, in, in social media, all the way to the conversion in which a customer is in a decision-making uh, position to either book an appointment with you or one of your competitors, and then ultimately, uh, when it comes down to the cash, right? Did they decide to buy from you, right? So there's a process in which you uh, want to be able to manage your awareness, findability, your reputation, the conversion, and obviously manage advocacy after. And that's what Brian's going to be talking about uh, after my piece. Oops, there we go. So managing impressions, right? Back in the day, they used to say, you only get one time to make a first impression. Well, there's several levels of impressions from a business standpoint today. And even in the dating world, <laughs> digital, you know, dating apps and things of that nature, there's all, all these dif different impressions that you have even before you meet a person in person, right? So your reactive 
impressions, impressions uh, go from radio to TV to PPC campaigns, <clears throat> search engine optimization, referral, organic, et cetera. There's so many different ways to get people to react to a product that you're trying to put in front of them or a brand that needs to be put in front of them. And then there's content impression. Again, this is a lot of what's on your website. Uh, your imaging, the videos that you've got on uh, various uh, platforms, we'll call them YouTube, uh, Instagram, things of that nature, case studies, before and after jobs. Um, so that, you know, obviously builds uh, social proof. Another impression, your social impression, again, reviews, how many followers, how engaged are you with, uh, with your followers and with your customers? How many likes are you getting based off of the jobs that you've been completing over the years. And if you're sharing case studies and videos, what's your viewership, right? And then more importantly, now it comes down to the first impression. Now this could be somewhat controversial because a lot of people think that the first impression in business happens in the home, okay? With virtual demonstrations that are taking place due to COVID-19, that's changed quite a bit. The first impression that people get of your business is actually over the phone, right? There's no possible way that a sales professional has gone out to that home unless someone over the phone booked the appointment, right? So that first impression is the most important the most critical impression that we should all have insight on. And if you're not recording your phone calls, that's where it's gonna start. So I'd like to get started typically um, when doing these uh, in person, it's a lot easier. We can, we, I can feed off of facial, inspection, facial um, expressions, things of that nature, but we're doing this over the phone. So one quick exercise is I want you guys to rate this phone call. And I'm not sure, Valerie and, and Brian, if we're able to uh, invoke some sort of chat or some sort of engagement, but I want you guys to rate the phone call that you guys are about to hear um, from one to five, five being the best, one being the worst, and everything else in between you guys understand. Just, by the way, um there you guys can just go into the chat box i have it open on this end and so i will um let jack know what you guys are saying inside the the chat box all right so listen to the phone call i apologize if you guys want to turn your speakers up real quickly it may can be a we, little before before we play this jack sure can do we or is this coming next uh, and stop me if it is but are it's we going to huh that's no, coming no. right now. No, no, wait. The the thing I'm going to ask you is, are we talking? Are we going to be talking about conversion? Lightly, very light conversion. Okay. So can I step on that for a minute? Before sure, please, please do. Okay. So, so one of the things about about this this whole idea of uh, of the inbound call, the first impression is that this is essentially a sales call. This is essentially a sales call. So somebody has raised their hand and said, hey, I maybe I'm interested in what you have to offer, whatever it is. When they get to the phone, the job there is to now convert that phone call into money, into an appointment. And otherwise, you know, it's, it's yes, we're talking about about first impressions and the importance of first impressions. But I want you all to keep in mind as Jack is going to play this, is this something, is this a phone call? Maybe this is how you would rate it. Is this a phone call that you think would turn into money? Is that fair, Jack? That's, that's very, that's extremely fair. And that's the okay. objective because a lot of people, right. they say, hey, people are calling me for appointments. They're calling me. Yes, they're calling me for an appointment. They are responding to your ad. However, they have to be convinced in why they should choose you for their an hour of, of sales demonstration versus someone else. And if that's not conveyed or articulated effectively over the phone call, then you're losing opportunities for revenue because they're not only calling you, but they're probably calling two to three other um, uh, businesses just like you that provide a very similar product or service. And that's why it's critical that this impression be managed. So I'm going to go ahead and play this phone call. And please turn your speakers up. I apologize if there's any technical glitches, but I'm going to go ahead and play it now. Thank you for calling. For retail. There we go.
Nope. So we're just going to skip over that. Yeah, due it's to, shaky. Yeah, due to uh, technical difficulties. I apologize for that. So we're just going to skip over that. But it, I'll tell it, you the it, background behind that. Yeah, let's talk about that. I let's was, talk about the call. Without yeah, I was presenting this particular case study for a dealer group, a nationwide dealer group. So I did a case study, 90-day case study, quantified every opportunity uh, of how much money was being lost on the phone. This particular call was funny because... I, I, it was a, it was a terrible phone call. I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know that that was a one. Okay. And an appointment was not booked. So I present the case study. I'm, I'm happy. I presented. Everyone's like, Oh, great job, Jack. This is awesome. So I go out to go get a phone to, to go get a cup of coffee. And gentleman behind me says, Jack, um, thank you. Thank you for coming out. That, that was a great presentation. Um, I want to know what your thoughts were on that call and why you thought it was a bad call. And I explained to him why I felt like the call was bad. It just so happened that the call was him. He was one of the owners who took the phone call and it just was un, he just had, he was unconscious of his own behaviors and his own performance trends. And he was like, this is very enlightening. After, afterwards, they signed up for some coaching and things of that nature. But that's, it, it's, it's always sobering and, and providing so much insight to, to how am I doing over the phone versus how someone else is doing over the phone. So this has been important to obviously recording and managing this impression, right? So by the way, owners should never be picking up the phone <laughs> ever because we will never follow the script. We will never do what we expect our people to do. Mm -hmm. Never. And right. And it's interesting, right? Because no one knows if they're recording phone calls, that's one thing, right? But how much time should I be spending every single month with an agent or every single week with an agent? Salespeople get all the love. They get to go to yeah. camps, boot camps, at every trade show, they get all the love. The people in the front office, they're always neglected because you can hear them in proximity. Oh, my girls, my girls sound great, my guys sound great. But you're not listening to both ends of the conversation, that's where the blind spot exists. So number one, you should be asking yourself, do you have the right tools in place to identify agent uh, performance and trends? And how many calls should I score every week and every month? I think we do a sales meeting every day in some, in some organizations, right? In the morning, before they go out on their routes and on their appointments, everyone's got the raw, raw, raw thing going. Salespeople, again, get all the love, front office staff get neglected. So what you'll learn today is how to utilize performance-driven data. Obviously, it starts with call recording. Your phone systems should have the ability to record the phone calls. If not, you should be researching ways to find ways to record your phone calls. How to implement that, non bias Go ahead. So, I, I, sorry to jump in here. Please, this, please, please. To me, this topic and why you are such an important resource for this industry is because this is a huge problem. Huge. Huge problem. Huge. huge problem. And so, I think that, you know, so when I had my home improvement company, I tell this story often, we used to get 50 phone calls on a Monday morning. Okay, on a Monday morning before noon, 50 phone calls. And we were, I mean, we had, everybody was trained. Everybody was on a script. We had, if they say this, then you do that. If they, you know, and we looked at those metrics like a hawk. I mean, every week I was looking at. So when you were saying earlier about, well, how often should we, looking at, should we be looking at this? You gotta be looking at this data daily, weekly, at a minimum so that you can course correct. Because again, remember, all this stuff that Jack is talking about ultimately is all about converting those inquiries into actual appointments, appointments that will demo and setting up your salesperson for success. So some of the things like we used to like on Monday mornings, we would just sit there, we had a whole, a bullpen and everybody that was answering the phone, we would just watch and we would listen. Are they on script? Are they not on script? We recorded the calls. And it was, I wish we had call source back then because it was a nightmare. You know, you know how it was back then. I mean, it was, you'd record it over here. It was, uh, the internet was a lot slower back then. Anyway, and- right. um, You have to be aggressive and you have to be consistent. Ex you're right, aggressive, consistent, and there has to be training involved in this and you have to you know understand what those metrics are because like for example in my company so you take 50 phone calls multiply that by 50 weeks that's 2500 phone calls 
if I, if I had a conversion rate, so let's talk real numbers. So my conversion rate, let's just say was 70%, that's 1,750 appointments. Well, what if I could get a few more points out of it? What if I could go from 70 to 75%? Now you're talking about a difference of 10%. 1,875. So that wow. difference of 175 5%. over the course of a year, how much money is that worth to the average company? I mean, that might have been another 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 jobs. Right. So right. we're talking about what, what Jack is talking about here is that I just want to make sure everybody that's, that's here understands just how critically important this is. Because what a lot of people do, and you know this as good as anybody, they feed the beast at the front end. They do. Leads, leads, leads. We need leads, leads. And it's like more leads, more leads, more leads. Okay, but are you looking at your conversion? Do you know what your conversion numbers are from when those leads call or fill out a form? How effective are you, are, are you at setting an appointment? How effective are you of getting them out to demo? So anyway, and, and, so and Brian, I just, I have to throw that in there, Jack. You do. Sorry, Thank you. I appreciate that. that yeah. There, there, are, there are certain organizations and certain companies that you guys are well aware of, the window nations of the world, champion windows of the world, statewide, remote, maxing. All these guys, in terms of their aggression and, and, and their finger to the post, it's in real time. So they even get notifications anytime someone doesn't book a job. And they try to reach back out to those homeowners to try to clarify whatever Jack said over the phone that was messed up to rebook those appointments. So that aggression, they don't feed the beast. They say, we're going to nurture every single lead. We're going to own every lead because we pay for it. We can't afford yep. for that lead to go to, to, to our competitors because we fumbled up on it. This is someone who's in the market. They're searching. They called us. We should be able to book this appointment because it's ours. Right. Okay. So that's the, 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 the number one priority to Brian's point is there's going to be a script that says you should react to this if this happens to that and da 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 it's going to be very very much a, a script or guideline but sometimes people sound robotic they're not responding they don't have the rebuttals but more important they don't have they, they have the training but they don't have the coaching that comes behind their performance and what a lot of people don't have and i'm going to be sending this off uh, on the behalf of, of uh, brian i'm going to send if you guys don't have a scorecard i'm going to send you an industry-wide scorecard that you awesome. could implement in today's business, right? This, that's gonna be one of your other takeaways. <clears throat> your scorecard, when you're managing the, the most important impression, which is the first impression, should be extremely simplistic. And Brian, this is, maybe this is something similar to what you've used in your business in the past. But what we recommend is that it exists of core, four principles, of four core principles, right? The greeting and the relationship building, simple things, did you sound enthusiastic when you answered the phone? Did you identify the caller? Did you determine what their basic need is? Did you validate the customer's need? Questioning and listening being one of the second principles, right? Are they asking open-ended questions? So really, really dig down and understand why, what, when, where does the customer need whatever product or service you're providing? And then to reassure that that customer, to reinforce that that customer did call the right place, Simply restate it. Just restate it. Make sure that all clarity is there um, on both ends to make sure that I do understand that we can help you. You also understand as the homeowner that you've called the right place and we can't help you, right? These are all things that are subconsciously building confidence for the homeowner to say, I've, I've called the trusted place, right? Especially in today's age when no one's just excited to have some stranger come in in the, in the, in, in the age of COVID to their living room to to do a demo right some of you guys have converted a lot of you guys have converted to virtual demos right but it's still important to convey whatever that message is over the phone effectively okay uh here's another here's two more building values and identifying opportunities for upselling right whether it's warranties whatever the upsell opportunity is make sure you're making recommendations that are personalized to that homeowner and then finally as great as people are over the phone, they sound enthusiastic. They sound educated. They're very informative, very, very, very helpful, right? That's their natural gift. But they start to 
kind of pucker up when it comes to finalizing, I'm going to call it the sale, asking for the commitment. Death of a salesperson is just not asking for the business, right? Same exact epidemic exists over the phone. People are, are, are they, they, they get extremely shy when it comes to overcoming objections, um, all those type of things. But if your people aren't asking for the appointment, more importantly, for both parties to be available, right? Some people just don't even do one leg appointments. But asking for both parties and explaining why we need both parties uh, to be on the phone. I've listened to a ton of calls <laughs> to where uh, people are asking for both parties on the phone. Um, for some odd reason, say, for example, the wife gets offended because the agent conveyed the message as if the wife was inadequate to make this decision herself, right? So they're like, oh, no, I'm calling someone else. You think, no, I don't need my husband here for this call, right? It, it's, it, you have to handle it with care. It's a, it's a lot of finesse that goes into asking for the commitment, but we all understand how important this is, okay? So I don't know what time is the, about 25 minutes in. I'm not gonna wrap it up just yet. I by the way, by the way, in my in my home improvement company over, you know, we're talking over 15 years ago, we used the same structure for those inbound calls. And mm -hmm. anytime I help a client put scripting together, it's got these all of these elements must be present mm -hmm. and must be scripted and right. must be taught and must be role played and must be role played and must right. be then listen to later to make right. sure it's happening. Right. Because, and, and you're, you're like right on with, obviously you're right on with this because this is what you do every day. Exactly. You exactly. know a little bit about, right. about what you're right. talking about here. <laughs> right. And so look at this in steps too, Brian, right? So the first things first, record your phone calls. If you're not recording your phone calls, then you'll, you'll right. never get what you think. You, you'll never be able to, to improve it. Yeah. Second thing is um, start to build out your script and start to implement core principles or elements, as Brian just said, into your script because it's going to be measurable, okay? And now that you've done all that, now you've listened to the phone calls. Guess what you have to do after that, Brian? Got a coach. You got a coach. Got that's a right. coach. Got yeah. a coach after that. So uh, that's also a very, very, very critical area, right? Because coaching is a talent. It's a, or it could be both. If, it, if it's not a talent, it's a skill that needs to be developed. And, and, and those who are in leadership, understanding that this skill or this talent that you have, it has to be implemented because what you're doing is you're creating a learning environment to conducive to the improvement, the performance improvement of the agent that you have responsible and you delegated to handle your leads, right? So you want to create a learning, a positive learning environment, right? So the first thing that you want to do, and I'm going to send this off to you guys as well because these are just 10 steps into improving first impressions, right? And this, this is, if, if it's something that you're not doing, uh, it, it's critical that you start doing it, right? But these are 10 steps. The first thing that you wanna do is obviously review and score the phone call. You're reviewing the scorecard based off of the score. I mean, you're, you're reviewing this call based off of the scorecard that you've developed yourself. Know their current goals that you've set for them. Set the atmosphere. I've, I've done a lot of sales training to where I've got you know, Kenny G playing in the background or some sort of music playing in the background to let everyone know that this is not a beat up on you session. This is a session to where if it's a group session, we're all learning from each other. I'll play some of my calls and, you know, I got beat up on that one. I should have did this. We're all giving feedback, right? Set the atmosphere for your either your one-on-one -on -one session, but more importantly, if you've got a bunch of people, team set, right? Uh, reward everyone for effort to resulting in improvement, high fives, Starbucks cards, whatever that thing is. Sometimes it's not even uh, it's, it's not even monetary. Some people just need recognition, acknowledgement of their performance to make it say you know to, to so that they know their role and that they're contributing to the growth of your business. Okay, um, explain the process. No matter how much you think someone understands uh, the process in terms of how you're going to be providing them feedback, explain it every session so that it's 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 ingrained in terms of what their expectations are during this session. Clearly state what the focus of is, whether it be the greeting, whether it be handling objections, whether it be asking for the commitment, clearly state the focus of this session, okay? When you're playing the phone call, don't play the entirety of the phone call. That may not be necessary. You, you definitely don't have the time to do that. 
but because you prepared at least one or two phone calls, play only the portion that you're focusing on for this particular session, whether it be a team or one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, play the call, play only the fourth. Um, after you have listened to the phone call, stop the call, sit back and listen, see what their feedback is. Is there a need to, to promptly ask, what did you hear regarding? It's, it's really just allowing them to have a lot of self accountability. No one likes listening to themselves. I know that Brian, you guys are gonna record this. There's a very good chance that I'm not gonna want to listen to it, but I'm gonna have to go back in and listen to it, right? No one likes the, the sound of their voice, but it allows you to improve. Just like uh, NFL players, NBA players, they gotta go back and watch tons and tons and tons and tons of film. No one likes doing it, but uh, you have to, right? And then more importantly, last, almost last step, probe, ask open-ended questions, allow the employee to state the expectation, how this, how the skill is achieved and why it's important to sell or relationship, sell the relationship, right? <clears throat> Everything that you do in these sessions have to be, it, all the goals that you set for your sessions, they have to be quantifiable. You can't just say get better at this, without having a score attached to it from the last session, right? You have to be able to, to measure progress as you go, okay? Ask them why they're, if they, if they have not improved, right? Um, ask them why they're still struggling in the same area. Create the dialogue. See how much they understand. Ensure that you've even got the right person in the right role, right? If, you're, if, you're, if it's not a reciprocal conversation, there's no way that you're gonna be good as, as a leader and as a coach in this type of environment when you're, when you're giving uh, transparent feedback, okay? Um, again, I think I've said set a goal, um, should feel, you know, so I'm blue in the face. Set a goal, ensure that it's quantifiable. <clears throat> make sure that it's very objective. No subjectivity in any of the goals that you set. Um, make it unbiased. Uh, set, set expectations for, for everyone, but more importantly, again, uh, tonality, your own tonality. Now you're measuring the same things that you measure over the phone. Well, tonality is going to be key in your role. Some people, I, I, I would never, ever put them in a, in a, in a teaching position because their, their expectations and their own performance trends are so high that they tend to beat up on people without knowing it, right? Um, the tonality of all these def different coaching sessions, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or team coaching session, it's extremely important that you set the tone uh, for a positive learning environment at the end of the day. So, um, Brian, that's what I have to share. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm more than happy uh, to have you send this off to anyone who's in attendance who would, who would benefit from uh, the core four principles of implementation as they create their scripting and making sure that they incorporate principles that are measurable. And then steps to improving, right? The coaching sessions that follow up with uh, listening to phone calls and monitoring phone calls. Um, and that's what I have yeah. to share today. Yeah, by, and by the way, this is for this is for everybody. everybody it doesn't matter what size your company is if you have one person in your company um this matters if you have 100 people it matters probably that matters a little bit more but the mistakes you know the the, the mistakes that you may i say it all the time if your profit model is broken at a million dollars, it's gonna be broken at three, it's gonna be broken at 10, it's gonna be broken at 20. It's the same thing with this. If this is broken when you're small, it's more than likely gonna be broken when you're big. You right. become big by getting good at stuff like this because every little conversion in this business means more money. Absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, so are we now, we're gonna switch over to me. So uh, Jack talked about, um, hold on one second. Okay, what's going on? All right, so, uh, so we talked about um, the front end, you know, and first impressions and how to make more money on the front end through a good experience. So make no mistake that everything Jack went through is all about designing an experience that customers will trust and customers will have confidence in. And when they have trust and confidence, then they're more likely to buy. And now when you get them to buy, how do you now wow them to get them to come back and buy more, to leave you reviews, to tell all their friends about you? 
And so that's what I'm going to cover here quickly. All right. I'm going to go through this real quick. If anybody, um, we're, we'll send out a replay for this. But if you have any questions for either one of us, um, I want to leave some time open that Jack and I can chat and answer your questions. All right. So the opportunity is once you get that customer is how do you create relationship with those customers so that, like I said, you get more reviews, more referrals, more repeat business, better word of mouth. So if you can do that effectively, your overall lead costs and marketing costs start to come down, which means your profitability grows, goes up your business or your brand value also goes up in relation to how many customers you have that come back to you and that refer you to others. The higher that number is, the more value your business has. Think about these companies, think about the most valuable companies in the world. Why are they more so valuable? Because their customers keep coming back over and over and over and over and over again. Right? In fact, and with a lot of those companies, they lock them into some sort of monthly payments. Think Apple, right? So business and brand value goes up. And also another important thing is your long-term business security goes up. So look, let's make, you know, make no mistake just between us. Hey, we're in a home improvement boom right now. 2020 is the year of the home improvement boom. And so what are you doing to take advantage of that boom? You have more customers now than ever before. One, you better make sure that you are as profitable as you could possibly be during this time. Second of all is how are you going to use those customer relationships next year, two years from now, three years from now to keep this boom going? You don't want to go boom all of a sudden up like this and then come crashing down because you didn't do anything to sustain this level of business. Now, and I say probably, I know there's your clients are on here and my clients are on here. So mostly they're probably, you know, in the, in the home remodeling, windows, roofing, siding, one day bath, that sort of thing. And if you're in that space, I think your minimum goal in terms of repeat and referral business should be about a third of your business, 25 at a minimum, you know, 25 to 35% of revenue at a minimum. All right. And so what I'm going to share with you here is what we call the four pillars of relationship marketing, because everything that's done, you know, post, post sale, post install, uh, we call that relationship marketing. And so the four pillars are customer appreciation, feedback and online reviews, a referral rewards program, and long-term customer nurture. Now, the important thing to notice here is that look at what the foundation is. The foundation for all of this is customer experience. Because if you don't deliver a good customer experience, none of this other stuff is going to matter. All right. So real quick, for those of you that don't know who I am and why you should even listen to me, um, I uh, am the co-founder of a company called G4 Marketing Group. And we provide these relationship marketing service to hundreds of companies around the country. Some names you might, you might know, but here's the thing. Last, in the last 12 months, our clients have done over 100,000 jobs. That's a minimum of 750 to about 900 million in revenue. So we are behind the scenes of a lot of home improvement companies. And so we kind of understand what we're talking about here in this area of reviews and referrals and repeat business. The other thing that, that we do is we've got this podcast called The Wealthy Contractor, and we've got a book called The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor, and we put on events. We have our big event coming up here in January um, here in South Florida, but that's just a little bit about who we are. So let's talk about this proven path of how do you create raving fans? How do you deliver on a customer experience that's so amazing, so good, that people wanna keep coming back, buying more from you and telling all their friends about you? So the first thing is appreciation. So after the job is completed, so think about this. So you know, remember, Jack talked about 
all of the experience that we've got up to and setting that appointment and then running those leads. What we're talking about here is what happens after that job is completed. So to me, one of the most powerful marketing strategies there is, is customer appreciation. Saying thank you, right? Everybody wants to feel like a special customer. For most people, most people, the thousands of dollars that they spent with you, whatever that amount was, 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, 20,000, that's a lot of money. And for you to not make a big deal out of it and say, thank you, hey, we appreciate you, is a huge mistake. Because one of the things that appreciation does is it helps you stand out from the crowd. By the way, this is an example of one of the things that we do for our clients. Imagine, you know, the job is done and a few days later, this box shows up that says thank you all over it. It's got a jar of cookies in it. It's got a thank you card in there. It's got a request for a, a, a review online, right? Are you gonna stand out in that customer's mind when you send them this? Of course you are. Right? You're going to stand out. You're going to be different from everybody else. And, you know, people say all the time, well, you know, I don't see what the value is in sending cookies to my customer. Well, it's not about the cookies. It's about the impression that that makes. It's about the way that it makes people feel about you and your company. I mean, look at this email. Um, Thank you for the cookies. What a nice surprise. Okay, that's a nice surprise. But I was talking with my sister and she mentioned that she might need a new roof. Could you please call me so I can talk in more detail with you? So basically, now you've got a customer that is handing off an amazing lead to you. This is what it's really all about. It's about creating raving fans because make no mistake, creating a raving fan is probably the best business strategy of all, okay? The second thing you want to do is you want to drive feedback and you want to drive online reviews. Again, all of this is built on delivering an amazing customer experience. So as we all know, there is business is different today than it was even five years ago. Right now, five-star reviews are critical and Google is the place to be. Google is the place to be. And so if you do this right, you're going to drive more low cost, organic leads to your business. You're gonna make your PPC spend, pay-per-click, which many of you probably do, you're gonna make it more effective. You're gonna support all of your other marketing efforts because you're gonna use these five-star reviews to make a case for why people should hire you, right? And that also helps make closing jobs easier. When people search for you online, you wanna dominate that first page with five-star reviews. You want people to be able to see, oh my God, this is, a, this is a reputable company. This is a company I can trust. Even though I know I'm gonna pay more, this is a company I know I can trust. And when it comes to reviews, you've gotta be proactive about it, proactive. We, for our clients, we don't just hope and pray that, re- that reviews come in. We work for them. We use mail, we use email, we use text messaging. I have a lot of clients that'll use face-to-face to to get, I could show using our app, I can show anybody how to get a five-star review on Google in 90 seconds or less, right? Interesting thing too about about the cookies, we did a study of of thousands of our clients and we, customers of our clients, and we looked at the people that we sent cookies on behalf of versus the people that we didn't send cookies for, just a thank you card. And the people that got a gift in the mail, a box, they reviewed at three and a half times the rate of the people that didn't, okay? So you gotta take this stuff seriously. Pillar number three is having a robust, dynamic referral program. So look, the the reality is people would like to leave more reviews, but the majority of them don't. Why? Why don't they refer you more? Well, there's some of the reasons. Your customer experience was just all right. 
You didn't give your customer a good enough reason to refer. I call this, you didn't give them a story to tell. You think about anybody that you've ever given a referral for, there's a story behind it. The master of this, by the way, is Walt Disney. Walt Disney gave thousands and thousands of people every single day a story to go home and tell all of their friends and all of their, anybody that would listen, right? And that's how Disneyland became the monster that it is today. Jack mentioned this, you know, in sales, if you don't ask for the order, if you're on the phone and you don't ask for the appointment, you ain't going to make a whole lot of money, right? Same thing with referrals. You got to ask. You got to stay in touch. And you didn't do the first thing. You didn't make them feel special and appreciated to begin with. So again, we take this stuff seriously. So we have a whole blown out referral program. We send communications. We, we put a letter in the mail. We send emails. We run a contest every quarter just to give us the excuse to show up every quarter and talk about referrals, right? And if you do this right, and if you do this right, what did I say earlier? Oops. Getting a phone call. Um, you do this right, you make a whole lot more money. These are our clients since 2010. And um, when, we, when they started with us, they were a nice size home improvement company. But in 2019, they did almost $30 million in sales. Their lead cost on that super low. They focus on their customer and their customer goes out and markets and sells for them. And then finally, number four is long-term customer nurture. You got to stay in touch with your customers. You've always got to be reminding them of who you are, all of the solutions you provide, all the products that you provide. You don't want them saying, oh, I didn't know that you guys did fill in the blank. You want to remind them of the benefits of working with you and how to get a hold of you. And you got to do this on a regular, regular basis. This is not a one-off thing. This is a campaign that is consistent week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. I always say you only have to stay in touch with your customers for as long as you want to be in business. So if you only want to be in business for a month or two, then only communicate with your customers for a month or two. But if you want to be in business for five years, 10 years, 20 years, guess what? You better start communicating with them on a regular and consistent basis. I believe in a multi-channel approach. We use the regular mailbox. We use the email. We use phone. We use texting. We use it all. Okay. We do newsletters. Um, we, one of the most powerful things, by the way, that you can have in your business is a customer newsletter. We do one for our clients. It's called the Happy Home Gazette. We're actually putting together our fall issue right now. And we do everything. We do all of the work. And um, this thing is the workhorse of our program because this is the way that you get out in a friendly package. You get to get out there and promote your products and services in your referral program to your customers, right? So again, the four pillars of relationship marketing are all based on the foundation for the whole thing is the customer experience, exactly what we've been talking about. And um, without the customer experience in place, what Jack talked about earlier, conversion rate's not going to be anywhere near where it could be or should be. And on the back end, you're not going to get anywhere near the, um, the opportunity and the money and the sales and the referrals and all of that that you could be getting or should be getting. Um, if any of you, by the way, if anybody's interested in this, um, we can, um, best thing to do is, um, I think, hey, Valerie, do we have a, let me. We should have a poll loaded. Um, okay. There should be two. Go there. Um, poll one. So here, what I'm gonna do is, 
let me, while you and I are talking, um, I'm going to launch a poll here for call source. Um, I am a big, huge um, advocate for, not only for this dude right here, Jack Price, who is an absolute pro. Thank so you. those of you that work with G4, if you have not had a conversation with Jack, uh, please get on the phone, just Thank listen you. to what he has to say. Um, their services are amazing. I wish that I had this back when I had my home improvement companies um, because it's really amazing. Everything that he talked about, they help do for you. So I've launched the poll. If anybody's uh, interested, just um, you know, I'll leave that poll up there for a minute. And if anybody's got questions, just go into either the Q&A or the chat box and Jack and I will hang out here and be happy to ask any questions for you. Um, I'm gonna put up the um, G4 poll here in uh, just a minute. So, okay. Anybody else? Call source? We take a no's as graciously, what is it? We take a no as graciously as we take a yes. <laughs> there you go, right? there you go. Me and Jack are professionals. Um, okay, let's launch the other poll. This is for G4. If you're interested in just 10 minutes, 10 minute, what we call a discovery call, just get on the phone and we'll ask you a few questions about your business. See if there's anything there that we can do to help. Um, I so, believe, uh, even what you're talking about today, Brian, there's a lot of gaps that post acquisition for us we uh we don't even do so I, I can see us leveraging a lot of the processes that you put in place for um you know the home improvement sector but this is just business in general right this if is you're in the business of, of, of making money and acquiring customers why should you not be uh aligned or, or you know compelled to, to give your customer um that wow factor i think one of the things that you said was make that customer feel special right from the beginning to the end and then long term so that you can start to generate those uh, referrals and that long time, uh, long term uh, relationship. I yeah. love that. Think about this, though. When was the last? And so, you know, you you made a major purchase probably in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and major. Let's talk about major. Major could be over 500 bucks, right, over right. a thousand bucks. Did the company make an effort? to make you feel special to right, even right. just send a little thank you card or right. a phone call or something right and most companies don't they don't a lot of companies don't even ask for reviews i mean even on yeah. small purchases things of that nature you get your oil changed you'll get a text message 15 minutes after leaving the shop and you'll get someone at least asking you for the review what i like about what you're doing is you're taking it a step further because even though they bought from you they've got other five other companies asking for reviews but no one sent a thank you box. Right. No, everyone knows. Yeah, I know reviews are going to benefit you long term, but you actually appreciated my business and you sent thank you box and cookie. That's that's phenomenal. And that's really taking it another step. Yeah. And by the way, you know, what's interesting is I, I have this conversation with people all the time. Who pays for all of that? Mm -hmm. Does the owner pay? Does the business owner pay? No. The customer, the customer pays the customer for pays everything. <laughs> right. Right. So if you're going to send somebody something, I mean, look, whether you use me or use somebody else, I don't care. But you, if it's going to cost you a hundred bucks, right. 50, if somebody just spent 10 grand with you. You can't right. spend a hundred dollars on them to send right. them something, to stay in touch with them, to, you know, over time, it's like right. add it to the job. If they spend 10,000, they'll spend 10,000. Right. right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's another thing that we'll, we'll, I want you to kind of follow up with as well is those who have never recorded their phone calls, or maybe they've never even had their calls uh, evaluated or scored, right? Because they don't have the proper tools in place. We'll do that for you at, at no cost. You know, that's our discovery uh, method as well. We'll run a 30 day eval for you, X amount of phone calls. And from there, we'll say, hey, did we find something that we can, that we can solve for, right? If not, then we'll walk away. You want to hear something funny? You want me to tell you a quick funny story? <laughs> so I used to own a franchise company. Mm -hmm. And at 
we were at one of our annual meetings and I don't know how many, uh, we had 30 at one point, but I think this meeting was before we had that many. So maybe there was 15 or 20 companies there. Mm -hmm. And we got on a huge uh, um, uh, kick on, on conversions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. on, on phone call to appointment because we right. knew in our own operation, we knew how critically important it was. Right. So we called. Now, we didn't have a service like call source back then. We had to do, I forgot how we had to do, but we had to buy this contraption from Radio Shack <laughs> that I think, anyway, whatever. We burned them all onto CDs. Oh, all wow. The, we called every single office. So everybody that came to that meeting got a CD of a phone call that we did to their office. Wow. And I played a couple of them in front of the group. Eesh. They were, can you, you can only imagine how oh horrible they were. And yeah. mind you, we had it all scripted mm -hmm. step by step. Right. And we even had, if they say this, then you, you say, say this. <laughs> And you, and you know what's funny too with, with all businesses, but let's, we're in the home improvement business. Mm -hmm. When somebody calls the business, there's only a finite number of questions that they're going to ask because right. they don't know any better. So right. they, they're only going to ask you one of four, maybe five things. Right, right. And so you identify what those things are, right? right. So all of our people that were answering calls, they knew. When you answer the phone, right. they're going to say either this, 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 or this. Right. And when they say this, you're going to say this, mm -hmm. you know, Nine and, and even then, even then all of these calls, there was not one, not one out of all of them that we could say was really, really good. That typically comes from lack of reinforcement, right? Yeah. It was, it was great when the script was new, everybody was happy and excited about it and yeah, I'm good at this now, blah, blah, blah. But there's no reinforcement or no measurement stick that says you're either doing good or you're doing bad or you're doing or you're doing great and how it impacts, right? So there's so much technology out there that measures that this yeah. day and age. You have to be able to take advantage of that. Well, yeah. And, and look, what's, what, what I really love about call source is, you know, you talk about call recordings. I mean, look, you can get call recordings done anywhere. Right. But here's what you can't get. You can't get somebody that's actually going to be listening to those calls on the other end, like right. you should be doing as right. the owner, mm -hmm. but actually listening and saying, oh, crap, you just missed out on this opportunity and right. get an email or a text message. Right. That, hey, you need to call this person back. Right. When you right. first told me that a few uh -huh. years back, and this was yeah. years ago that you guys do that, I was blown yeah. away by that. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a, it's, a, it's a major sticking point for a lot of our clients. I mean, it just it is. You've got turnover, right? Some people just leave. Some people just aren't the role. Some people get promoted into different roles. Yeah. And so it's a constant effort, just like you said. It's a, it's, it's a campaign, you yeah. know, to keep your, to stay in front of your customers and, and maintain that wow factor and that experience. It's a, it's a, it's a campaign. That's what I really love about your approach is that it's, it's, yeah. it's something that should be sustained. Did you, did you, do you work with, uh, with window nation? Window nation, if you name the big guys. Yeah. Were on so, the, okay. So here's what's interesting. I mean, you know, Harley very well. Yeah. So Harley and his brother, Aaron right. started this company 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. They're going to do what? 150, 160 million this right. year. Right. These guys have built a hell of a business, yeah. a hell of a business. There are clients too. And all of this stuff that, that Jack's been talking about is they are like, if they were not watching their numbers, they're obsessive. They did, uh, what? They're obsessive. Obsessive. So yeah. you know what's funny is I was just having lunch with, uh, all right, so now you guys are going to hear us having a Jack and Brian conversation, but hey, they're all still here. So why not? Uh, listen in. Um, but I was just having lunch with these two young guys two brothers that started a SaaS a software as a service company in market in the marketing space. They started this five years ago. Um, one brother is 25, the other one's 30, but I met them 10 years ago. So wow. I met, I met, I met them when the little one was 15 and the older one was 20. They were kids, but the 15 year old, this little dude 
I mean, this kid outsourced high school. He basically <laughs> hired other kids to do his work so wow. that he could work with his dad on his dad's marketing company, writing code, writing all this. I mean, these kids are just brilliant. And we were talking about the difference between regular, like regular business people. Uh -huh. Like I would consider probably you and me were like more like regular, yeah. more yeah. successful probably than regular. But, and then we were talking about the Harleys of the world. Right. And that was the word that came up. Yeah. They are obsessed, obsessed. Mm -hmm. And um, look, I mean, we don't, I, I, I don't aspire to build a $150 million company. I'm right. perfectly happy having them as clients mm -hmm. um, because I get, you know, I get what I want out of it and I'm perfectly <laughs> happy with that. But uh -huh. if you want to grow your company, you don't have to be obsessed to that level, but learn from what those guys are doing. Right. 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 Learn from what people like them are doing, which is what my podcast is all about. Yeah. Let's I mean, learn from guy. Harley's been on it. Aaron's been on it. Let's learn from guys like that. It's a mentality. Definitely and, a mentality. Um, you think about that. You know, that mentality yeah. that, that in the NBA world now, they call it the Mamba mentality. Right. Yeah. But, you know, that, that level of obsession has to exist at some level. At some, at some level. Yeah. For everybody, it's a little bit different. Right. The level of obsession for a $5 million company is different than the level of obsession at 150, right. but the principles do not change. Yeah. The principles do not change. They're all the same. Yeah. Love it. All right, man. Well, it's always great hanging out with you. And, yeah, man. Uh, I hope this was valuable for your clients and I hope it was valuable for my clients. Thank you for having me. Um, I think if people want, we can make a replay of this available. If you got, if you want, we can make it available for your people. Absolutely. And um, if anybody's got any questions, um, uh, reach out to me or Jack, just respond to one of the emails and we'll, we'll hook you guys up. All right. All right. Brian, well, always good candy, man. Look forward to January, all right? All right, awesome. Thank okay. you. Take care. All right, thanks, everybody. See you next time. All right.